Good evening. My name is Daniel Haggerty. William Bear and I host the Bear Haggerty Offensive Radio Show on Repatriate Radio, broadcast into Philadelphia on WNJC 1360 AM, and carried online at the internet on WNJC1360.com. We are here in Morristown, New Jersey, headquarters of General George Washington and the military capital of the Revolution. There are a lot of people here tonight and a lot of organizations. I want to mention some of them. The Morris County Republican Committee, the Morris Patriots, the Bayshore Tea Party, the East Jersey Tea Party, the Sussex Tea Party, and I'm sure a lot of you are here from groups that I don't even know about, and that's a wonderful thing. We're all here for the same thing. Absolutely. And our favorite local group, Americans for Liberty, who is staffing this event. And we want to especially thank some other people. Mayor Scott Rosenbush, who provided this venue. Scott, thank you very much. I mean, isn't this just a great room to have this kind of event in? It looks like a courtroom. <laughs> and I want to give a special thanks to two men who made this event really possible with their strong support. And one of them is the chairman of the Morris County Republican Committee, John Setti. <laughs> and also our own Morris County Sheriff, Ed Rochford. Ed, how are you? Susan over there will pass around a bottle. Uh, a bottle. <laughs> pass the bottle. Uh, think, think of it like church, please. Put some money in. We are here tonight to witness the presentation of evidence which calls into question the eligibility of Barack Obama for the office of President of the United States. This is not a question of politics. This fundamental issue goes to the heart of our constitutional republic and the rule of law. Common citizens have taken this case all the way to the United States Supreme Court and at every step of the way have in effect been told that they have no right to even ask this question. Several of them are here with us tonight. I want to recognize them. Attorney Mario Apuzzo. <laughs> Citizen Nicholas Perpura, where are you now? <laughs> and retired Naval Commander Charles Kirchner. Charlie, where are you? several years. These gentlemen have all fought to the Supreme Court on this issue. They've spent their own money and they've been basically told, you have no right to ask this question. Talk to them afterwards. They'll tell you about this issue and the experience they had doing it. For nearly four years, the mainstream media has refused to honestly cover the issue of Barack Obama's eligibility for the office of president. Tonight's guest is one of the few journalists who has investigated this issue and has done so with the tenacity and thoroughness it requires. He is a best-selling author and an expert on political violence and terrorism. In 1972, he received his PhD in political science from Harvard University and currently serves as a senior staff writer for the online news giant WorldNet Daily. He is the author of 10 books, 
including New York Times bestseller, The Abomination, Unfit for Command, Swift Boat Veterans Speak Out Against John Kerry, yeah. and his current bestseller, Where's the Birth Certificate? The case that Barack Obama is not eligible to be president is the subject of tonight's presentation. Please welcome a former guest on the Bear Haggerty Offensive and a friend, Dr. Jerome Corsi. themselves birthers at this time. 
See, it's okay if the left wants to raise an issue that is politically correct, and the uh, Wall Street Journal, unfortunately, even the Wall Street Journal today, New York Times, Washington Post, ABC, they all pile on. Here's CBS. And of course, in true Saul Linsky fashion, you all know who Saul Linsky is. Saul, well, Saul Linsky was the radical, the community organizer that Obama follows, and in his book, Rules for Radicals, he taught the left to, to isolate and humiliate anyone who dares question the left's fascism. We dare question anything that the left uh, proposes, you're a birther. They, however, when they challenge this, are legitimately asking a question that we're not permitted to ask about Obama. And you can see this goes on. MSNBC, I collected a whole series. I doubt if anybody at ABC. And what McCain did is McCain came forth to the Senate and he presented his birth credentials. He actually showed that he was born in the Panama Canal. A resolution was passed, S-111. And in that resolution, and again, it was legal scholars came forward. You had uh, both, you know, some of the most prominent legal scholars in the country writing to say that the Founding Fathers never meant someone to be disqualified for running for president because they were born outside the country when their parents were serving the nation in the military. See, the real definition of natural born citizen is two U.S. citizen parents when you're born and born in the United States. And that's a definition that goes back to an 1874 case, Minor v. Haberset, I'm sure Mario Cruz would agree with me here on this. And in fact, it's the only time the Supreme Court has really commented on the meaning of natural born citizen. The left tries to read the 14th Amendment into it, tries to say a native born citizen is a natural born citizen. It's just not the case. When the Constitution adds a qualifier, natural born, it means that it's not just a citizen, but a subset of citizen. And that subset, the Founding Fathers did not want somebody who had backdoor connections, especially to Great Britain and their citizenship, to somehow or other assume the American presidency. And that happens to be the exact definition of Barack Obama. As Barack Obama did not present his birth credentials to the Senate, he refused. McCain did, and Obama did not. And you can see all these articles, New York Times, it goes on and on with McCain and the questioning about McCain. Now, Obama refused to present his birth credentials because he knew that just from the fact that his father was a Kenyan when he was born, meant that Obama was a dual citizen at birth. Citizen of the Commonwealth of Great Britain, through his father, and of the United States. Well, a dual citizen, by definition, is not a natural born citizen, especially if the allegiance is to Great Britain. And in fact, I can show you, I've, I've found, you know, not only Obama's website during the campaign, here's more documentation on McCain's birth, but they even had it on the Obama websites, the State Department actually did, Fact Check did, here was all the different publications that said Obama, they were at one point or other praising, this was from the State Department's government website, and it declared that Obama was a dual citizen at birth because he was born with his father in Kenya. As soon as I wrote about this at WND.com, the State Department took it down. Because <laughs> they didn't want to have to be known to have admitted that Obama was a not a natural born citizen and shouldn't have been there to begin with. Now, as we go along here, now, many of these are about the certificate of live birth that was presented, which uh, I think was clearly false. And by the way, this is a birth certificate that was given by Hawaii in uh, 1904 to Sun Yat-sen. You know who Sun Yat-sen was? He was one of the great leaders of national China, nationalist China. And he was never born in Hawaii. He was born in China. It just was that they got an affidavit. I found all this in the National Archives. They, had, they put down affidavits. Here was 
you know, the secretary, the secretary of the territory of Honolulu, saying he looked at all the affidavits that that Sun Yat-sen was born in Hawaii, and so therefore he gave him an Hawaiian birth certificate. Well, Hawaii happens to be the easiest state in the nation if you want to get a U.S. birth certificate and you weren't born here. Because, see, one of the provisions of Hawaiian law, even today, allows the, the family to come in to a Hawaiian Department of Health office and say, our child was born and this child is an Hawaiian birth. Well, where was the child born? Oh, maybe Kenya. But see, we're, we're, we live here in Hawaii. And so therefore, because we live here, the child is ours, the child's an Hawaiian child. And the Hawaii Department of Health says, okay, and they issue them on a Hawaiian birth certificate. Hundreds of thousands of Japanese over the years, we trace this back even into the 20s, have been born in Japan, but say the family in Japan comes and buys an Hawaiian property, not unusual. They register their children as Hawaii births. Not because they think that they're going to be president of the United States, but because there's an advantage, an intrinsic advantage to being a U.S. citizen, which I think everyone in this room would openly acknowledge. You know, why do so many millions of people struggle to get into the United States every year? Because there's tremendous advantages in being an American citizen. And Obama's grandparents could easily have come in and registered the birth. These Hawaiian birth announcements, which Obama's is down there, mean nothing. I searched hundreds of them. I got the entire month of August 61. One paper lists birth announcement, the other paper doesn't list. There are missing announcements. All the announcements list a man and a woman, usually misses and misses. There was 1,000 births in 1961 to unwed mothers. They aren't listed anywhere. These birth announcements were generated by the Hawaii Department of Health, and many Japanese are listed here who were not born in Hawaii. They were born in Japan. Now, Obama, up until he was running for president, had no problem telling everybody that he was Kenyan-born. Here's an article from 2004 from the Sunday Standard. It's saying, Kenyan-born Obama all set for U.S. Senate. He had no problem. Obama didn't try to correct this article. It was published around the world. Here is an NPR radio announcement, even a program from 2008 in which they introduced the Kenyan-born Barack Obama. See, now when that was pointed out to NPR, they immediately scrubbed it on the internet and replaced it with presidential race of Senator Obama, whose father was born in Kenya. Nice, you know, the internet is beginning to remind me of George Orwell and the, you know, the memory hole where you throw things down that are inconvenient and rewrite history. Obama's done a lot of that. Again here, Kenyan-born senator. Uh, this is, again, in the Nigerian Observer. This is from Ghana, when Obama visited Ghana, returning to the continent of his birth. <clears throat> I even found exhibits in the, uh, these are from the uh, rulings of the, the parliamentary debates in Kenya, where in Parliament, Obama has been acknowledged to have been born in Kenya. His grandmother says he was born in Kenya. Remember, I was in Kenya, and I was, where I was deported, they didn't want me giving a press conference. You all remember that? And I came back with a lot of documents that basically supported the idea that Obama is Kenyan-born and widely regarded so in Kenya. Now as I researched this, it further became a problem because increasingly I was looking at what Obama said about his birth. And here when he first decided to run for president, this says, Barack Obama was born August 4, 1961, at the Queens Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. Well, that's interesting, because we checked with the Queens Medical Center, and there was no record of Obama being born in the Queens Medical Center. We even found in the Library of Congress genealogical listing for Barack Obama that originally it said he was born in Queens. <laughs> 
Well, now, once we found out his mother had never been a patient at Queens, guess what? Obama changed it and decided he had been born at Kapiolani Hospital. <laughs> Here's a letter he supposedly wrote to Kapiolani thanking them for being the place of his birth. Is there anybody in here who was born at two hospitals? <laughs> I mean, I guess it can happen, you know, the baby has a problem and they have to take the mother to another hospital to deliver it. But it would be such an exceptional case that it would be hard to get confused about which hospital you were born in. <laughs> confused about which hospital you were born in probably means the thing from the beginning, at least to me, an investigative journalist, was a lie. And we have yet to find any records. This letter, by the way, WND proved was an electronic letter that was created by Abercrombie, the governor, in his office. Capulani refuses to show this letter. I went to Capulani Hospital in Hawaii in April last year, May last year, the very beginning of April and May, after the so-called birth certificate had been released, and asked to see this letter and to see the proof that Ann Dunham had been a patient. Capulani said, if I didn't leave the premises immediately, they'd call security and have me arrested. Now, wait a minute. It was my hospital, and I was the administrator, and the president was born there. I think I'd have a little shrine in the lobby. And I'd be raising a lot of money on the fact that the president was born here. Instead, Capulani has it hidden away, and the police are called if you ask to see the records. Well, it doesn't sound to me like they're too confident that it's true the president was born there. And we showed, we did all the analysis, that letter was in fact a fake letter. With an electronic signature, here's supposedly the real letter. They, they have it in a vault, they say, because they don't want it damaged. Nobody can see it. It's in the vault at Capulani Hospital. All right, well, as we, you know, researching this, going along with, in short, and looking at Barack Obama's entire history, what I've found is everything about Barack Obama that is in the public record is essentially a lie. That's right. Almost every single thing he tells you in Dreams of My Father is not the way it happened. As I go back up here, or as look into the records, um, it was said that Barack Obama's parents, oh, it said that Barack Obama came to the United States in the airlift that Jackie Robinson put together in 1959 with Tom Amboya. I went to the Library of Congress and here's the manifest of all the Kenyan students who were on that <coughs> airlift. And I almost fell out of the chair. Obama wasn't on the list. <laughs> he didn't come on this airlift. He came earlier from private supporters who ended up being communist sources for the money. But yet Obama Jr. lies and says his father who came on that airlift. And by the way, this is Barack Obama Sr. at a, uh, one of the parties at Kapiolani when he was supposed to have been married to Ann Dunham. Now, my wife is here. If she ever saw me at a party that close to a woman having a cocktail, it wasn't her. I, I probably wouldn't live long enough to be divorced. <laughs> and you also notice, if you can see it closely enough, that uh, he is not wearing any wedding money. And the INS now, the Immigration Naturalization Service, we have the records. They doubted he was ever married to Ann Dunham. There's never been a marriage certificate found. In fact, they doubted it was his child because they said he had a lot of girlfriends at the university. He never lived at the same address as Ann Dunham. And within three weeks of when the baby was born, Ann Dunham left Hawaii, and she was at the University of Washington in Seattle taking night courses. Now, it's pretty remarkable if you think about it. An 18-year-old girl, baby three weeks old, traveling to Seattle without her mother, enrolling in night classes. I mean, I don't know how many of you have had daughters that have had babies. I'm sure many. And, it, you know, three weeks into the baby, you're not about to let that daughter go thousands of miles away from you unless it's an emergency. And how do you handle a baby and go to night school unless that baby's a lot older than three weeks? 
See, the story doesn't fit together once you get the facts. And the lie that was told in Dreams from My Father, Obama's book, was the family stayed together until Barack Obama Sr. had to leave to go to Harvard. And that's when the family broke up. The truth is, the family was never a family. And the INS said that if Ann Dunn used that Barack Obama had a American wife and an American natural, you know, a citizen baby, the INS was going to contest this as a sham marriage designed only for immigration purposes. That's how little, in 1961, anybody believed that Barack Obama Sr. was really the father. Now as we forward this a little bit, you get to the point where Barack Obama, at, at ages 6 to 10, goes to Indonesia with his new stepfather. This is all supposed to be a great story of diversity. Aren't we going to love it, you know, all this intercultural, international experience? Well, it's wonderful, except that here's the school record for Barack Obama in Indonesia. I got this. The AP finally validated it's, it's authentic. I had a source in Indonesia who was getting this. You see, he's registered as Barry Satoro. So now our president has another name. Now, if you have another name, it's an Indonesian name. You're not using your U.S. name from your father, Obama, who comes from Kenya, who the INS doesn't really think is your father. You've got a lot of problems in your identity. And you're probably an Indonesian citizen, which is what this document says. And by the way, a Muslim. Which would mean that he compromised by being an Indonesian citizen, his natural born citizen status. Again, you can't be a dual citizen and a natural born citizen. Our, our founding fathers didn't want that. And it didn't make any difference if you made the decision or you didn't make the decision. Natural born citizen is not something that you choose, it's something that is a condition, a state. You know, you are born here with two U.S. citizen parents, or you are not. You hold your U.S. citizenship without break and do not become a dual citizen, or you do. When you become a dual citizen, you're disqualified from being president, whether or not you chose it. And by the way, this is Ann Dunham's passport record. And on Ann Dunham's passport records, we see that she submitted this, this um, application in 1970, when she was in Indonesia. And by the way, here down with her son, this part of the application was where you were instructed to cross out with hash marks anyone who is on your passport whose nationality is changed. And the name crossed out is, is a, a Barack Hussein Obama. In parentheses underneath it, Soy Barka. So now Obama has another Indonesian surname. He's now Barry Satoro Soy Barka. Or is he Barack Hussein Obama II? What's his legal name? The truth is, we don't know. Because Barack Obama will not show us his adoption papers if they exist. We can't see his passport records if they exist. We're not permitted to see his school records. Even his kindergarten records are lost. <laughs> so you see when you find out about Barack Obama, the dog ate most of the records. <laughs> you know, like a kid with the whole record. dog's been very active. The dog has hunted all Barack Obama's records. He has a great appetite for them, and they're all eaten, which is why you can't see them. Can you imagine, you can't see Barack Obama's kindergarten records? Well, again, this is likely because he may have been registered as a foreign student especially in Occidental, where he roomed with Pakistanis. And we now know, traveled to Pakistan at the end of his time at Occidental. We don't know on what passport. This would have been in the early 80s when the Soviet Union was invading Afghanistan. And while it was possible for Americans to get into Pakistan, they weren't welcome. Now here you get some Pakistani students showing up with a American student to enter into Pakistan, there's got to be some question, what are you doing here? And certainly the intelligence agents, including our CIA, 
would have been extremely interested to know what this young man was doing in Pakistan, staying, by the way, with some very elite families. There you can see more clearly the Barack Hussein Obama Soy Barka in his mother's handwriting on her passport. Um, as we go through the entire record, this is the INS, uh, this is one of the uh, documents about Obama and, and his, his records in terms of coming in and coming out of the United States. We do not know all the times Obama was in the United States or out of the United States. We don't know all the countries he traveled to. And by the way, his passport, as shown by the White House, has his name as Brock.